Well, good morning, BookTube. Welcome back to my channel. My name is David, and if you're new here, welcome. Uh, today, I'm going to do my weekend mishmash. I didn't do one last weekend because um, I had done a, a really long live uh, to celebrate New Year's Eve uh, and, and counted down my top 21 of 2021 and did the uh, book postscript tag. So if you haven't seen that already, uh, and are interested in hearing all of those kind of down, uh, go check that one out. It was a lot of fun. It was long. I did it live. Did, uh, talk about every book that merited being on the list. Um, I, I had a very good reading year and, and looking back on it. And uh, my, my greatest fear is having missed books that probably deserved consideration because I just forgot because of how long it had been. Uh, and you have the, the newness that comes through with what you've been recently reading and enjoying. But I do feel pretty confident, at least about my top five on uh, both my rereads and my new-to-me reads. And so I'm back with another mishmash. This is my favorite type of video to make because I can just talk about whatever happens to be on my mind. I, I like giving myself that freedom. So I'm going to open each of these this year. I've got this Lord of Trivia daily um, calendar. And so I'm going to, every weekend, give you the, the weekend one. And uh, feel free to comment with the answer if you think you know it. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun. I'll reveal at the, the next week what this one was and then give you the, the new one each and every week. So this question is, the beautiful, powerful Galadriel is actually a grandmother. Who is her grandchild? So feel free to, to play along with me. It's fun. At least I think it's fun. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, what I've been doing. I'm... My big thing is I want to just talk about what I've been reading. So this year I've decided to just take a, a normal notebook, just normal notebook, and, and keep tabs on what I'm doing. So I'm tracking both board games played and books that I finished reading um, along the way. And so this is my progress so far in January 2022. I'm going to make a mark at the end of this video on here so I know what I've talked about previously. And so that's, this will help with my mishmash, if nothing else. And so we'll kick off with what I've been reading. Then I'll give you updates on my 100 book challenge and, and all of those things. So board games that I've played. Because it starts with a board game. So I'm, I'm going to mix it up, and I'm going to start by talking about board games. I've played uh, one, two, three, four, five, six board games. Two of them solo. And I'm going to talk about those first. Uh, because one of them is the one I started with. Uh, and that is Nemo's War. It's a solitaire board game. Uh, it does have rules to play two-player, kind of working together. But it was designed and, and originally marketed as a one-player game. And you're Captain Nemo. So uh, if you've read Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, it takes heavy inspiration from that. And so each and every round, you're flipping over a card, and that's got a little bit of a story beat, and then something's going to happen because of it. And then you're going to do some actions to try and move around and do some exploration to find treasure, to fight off ships, um, whatever the case may be. And you have a couple of different uh, goals that you could choose from in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. And depending on which goal you choose, um, you will get more or less points for each different type of task that you're doing. So it, it, it's a really interesting dynamic, and it's got a lot of uh, value to revisit it within that box. And I absolutely enjoyed it. It's one that I'd wanted to play for years. I finally got a copy of it and absolutely enjoyed it. It will not be the last time you hear me talk about Nemo's War. I, I lost. Uh, got to a point where I, I was pretty guaranteed to lose at some point in time, uh, just because things were kind of steamrolling a little out of control. Being my first time playing it, I didn't really have a good way of measuring, engaging what I should be doing. So I, I was there to, you know, pull levers, to, to try different things, try different actions, see what happened as a result of those. 
um, and, and learn from it so that the next time I played it, I would do a little bit better. And had an absolute blast. The other solo game I played, I played last night. Uh, and that's this little thing right here called Rage More. So um, this is a, a game by a publisher called Buttonshine. They have these wallet-sized games that are 18 cards. And so in this one, you're, you're trying to, to complete quests. It's very abstract. Um, but what you're... You, you've got one side of it, which is kind of you know, when you have the card, it's on this hero side, and it's got some symbols on there. And then when it's uh, up in the quest area, they're, they're enemies. And so they'll have symbols on there and values and then some things that will happen. And you're trying to get set up symbols in your tableau to take out one of the rows based on the, the symbols that are shown there to, to be able to take out the rows. And if any of the rows get too many cards, then you will lose. So you're, you're trying to stem things off and trying to manage things. One of your actions actually takes a card from your the enemy row and flips it into yours. Um, but you don't necessarily know what's on the back because like this one, it's got a, a cross there. You flip it to the back and it's uh, those little snake looking things. So uh, a really interesting game. It's a fun little one. It's 10, 15 minutes. And if you enjoy fantasy, um, and if you like that artwork style, you, you might enjoy this one. It's a fun little one uh, that I like pulling out on occasion and uh, because it takes very little to, to go through and play through the game. Um, with my wife, so we, we keep tally of every year of who wins in our head-to-head -head games against each other. Last year, she won 60, or, yeah, 63 to 52 or something like that. <sighs> It was not a good year for me in playing games uh, with my winning record, but that's okay. You know, I'm playing games to have fun. And so this year we played, kicked it off with Architects for the West Kingdom, which is a, a little worker placement game that uh, she really enjoys. It's much faster than it looks. And it's the first game in uh, a, a trilogy of games called that all end in of the West Kingdom. And it's by far my least favorite of the three. But I actually won that game and, and had a good time with it. We've got a little poster. We've got two posters back there. Uh, the one with the, the gold there, that's a scratch. Both of them are scratch off posters. The gold one is top 100 board games. And it's uh, a little outdated. It's got at least one questionable game included on there because it's not one of the top 100 games. But what what she's agreed to is to play all of them with me head to head regardless of whether she's interested in it or not we don't own all of them we'll have to to big borrow and steal to to get them all but we'll, over the course of the next couple of years we're going to play through all of those and you get to scratch off the game as you go so architects of the west kingdom was one of them on that list so we were able to scratch that off the other poster there uh, is a 50 some games uh, that was put out by one of the big board game teaching channels called Watch It Played. And so he selected games that he, he had covered at rules explanations over the course of his channel. And so when I got that one, we, we were wondering what to do with that one uh, because it's got a little crossover, but not a lot of crossover. And so she uh, gave the great suggestion. We have a, a friend that comes over some Sundays and plays board games and the three of us usually play games and, she said, well, why don't we play that one with him? And so we started that one last Sunday uh, by playing a game called Tapestry. Uh, this is by the a very, very popular publisher called Stonemeyer Games. Uh, they made a game called Wingspan, which uh, is one of the, the most popular games uh, all about birds. And it's a, a wonderful, delightful game for uh, new and experienced board gamers. So regardless of where you fall, that one's definitely one you should put on your radar uh, to go and check out. But we played Tapestry, which is kind of a civilization game where you're building up civilizations, but it's very, very abstract to it. Um, and, and so we played that, and our friend thoroughly dominated that one, uh, as he had done a couple weeks ago when he came and we'd played it uh, with him ahead of time. But I had a lot of fun with that. And then we had a, friends over on Friday to celebrate a, a late Christmas together. 
because uh, we had had them over for Christmas the previous year, them and all the kids, and had a really good time of it. And so we played a couple of shorter games with them. Uh, they brought a copy of a game called Bosk, uh, which is where you're, you're putting out trees on a, a square grid uh, on, on the corners of it. And so you've got a little bit of each. The trees have a value one through four. Everybody's got two of each of those values. And so after everybody's put out all eight of their trees, you'll go through and check each row and each column to see who has the highest value and the second highest value, and they'll get some points. And then the second phase will happen where wind's blowing in a different way each of eight different times, and you've got eight different leaves with values two through eight, and then one that is a, a squirrel that basically is like a, a trumping on it. And so you're putting out leaves onto the squares and then pulling off the trees as you go. And so each of your trees is going to blow out some leaves anywhere from one to eight because the squirrel puts out just the one. And then you'll look at each colored area and see who has the most leaves and the second most in each of those areas, and they will get points. And it was a fun little game. Um, re really enjoyable for what it was. Will probably never be one of my favorite games, but it doesn't need to be. And then uh, we pulled out our copy of a game called Mercado de Lisboa, um, which is uh, another shorter game. Uh, the rules even say on there, five minutes to learn, 30 to 45 minutes to play. That it doesn't assume interruptions from eight kids, um, because uh, between their kids and our kids, you know, there's interruptions, and we took a pause in there to, to go and do Christmas presents. But it's a fun little one where you're putting out food stands and then opening restaurants and uh, attracting customers into the, the district to try to earn the most money. And I uh, had a real good time with that one. It's always enjoyable to get to the table. Kind of like Bosque. It'll never be one of my absolute favorites, but one I always will enjoy when I get to play it. So that covers the board games that I've played in the last week and have had a really good time enjoying those. So, uh, what have I finished reading this week? Well, the first one I'm going to actually grab my copy of it off the shelf. I'm going to be making a video about this, probably to try to get one up for Wednesday, for Epic Comic Book Wednesday, because it, I finally finished the first Epic collection of the four. Well, I think it's three Epic collections and then just one uh, little hardcover collection of, of Conan comics that Michael K. Vaughn was kind enough to send me. And uh, I really enjoyed this. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, I started it last year, finished it this year, uh, very early in the year. And so the, the standout for me this year was the one that uh, had the bull god in it. Uh, that was a fun one. I mean, all of them were enjoyable in, in some degree. And so i really happy to have had this, to have read it. I've got at least one other graphic novel comic that I want to get to first before returning back to Conan, but I will certainly be continuing and getting through all of the other three Conan volumes that I've got on my shelf before the end of this year, because it's just been enjoyable. Then I finished reading the poems of Catalysts, started this late December, finished it this month, very early in the, the year. It was fine. Um, the the promise I felt from the first couple poems didn't really live up across the entire collection. Some of them were great. Some of them were eh. Um, yeah. But I'm glad I read it. It was one of the Western canon things from Steve Donahue. So I uh, really had a good time getting to know Kettles. And then uh, two others that I've finished so far. I've had a good start to my reading month. Uh, Ship of Destiny by Robin Hobb. This is the third book of the Live Ship Traders trilogy. So this finished the trilogy out. Buddy reading it with Beth Ann and Rachel. And this might have become my favorite. I, I wasn't expecting it to be. Uh, Mad Ship was really, really good action-packed all the way, which was book two of it. Uh, this one kind of slowed down for the first half of this book, but then just really, really ramped up at the end and had some really interesting twists along the way. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading Robin Hobb. 
it has me itching to to read more Hob this year, which is a good and bad thing, I guess. Maybe I think I might even have the first book of the uh, next trilogy on my shelf. So I know I've got Assassin's Apprentice, first book in the Farseer trilogy on my shelf, but I don't have the other two, so I can't even I work on my hundred book challenge and go back and revisit those. But uh, enjoyed that. And then I finished a, a, my first play out of Shakespeare because I'm reading 12 months. Each month I'm going to read something Shakespeare. Two of those months are going to be covering his poetry, including next month. But So that means I'll be reading at least 10 Shakespeare plays. But the one I read this month was Measure for Measure, which is one the, the one comedy that I threw on there because it was one that I wasn't sure I had ever read. And after reading it, I had never read this one before. It was fine. It was enjoyable. Shakespeare is always enjoyable. There's always memorable lines and parts. Uh, one, one part of, about uh, the, the prisoner saying that he uh, can't go and be executed right now because he's tired, he needs sleep. And then the, the, the guards kind of responding with, uh, I, I hear that execution leads to even better sleep the next day. You know, So it, it was just enjoyable seeing that kind of exchange and, and some... Uh, some usual Shakespeare fare in there of mistaken identities and some deception along the way. And, and so revealing uh, an interesting twist at the very end of it. And so it was enjoyable. Um, it, it'll never be among my favorite of Shakespeare's plays, but it definitely was worth reading. I, I had a good time of it. Forgot to write it on my, so on my journal here, I've got the very opening pages. I have my tracker for the 100 book challenge. So this is not all ones that I started this year. These are all the ones that I've read to date. So I am at 17 out of 100. So I've added on there since we last spoke, um, I think, yeah, I had had Lyrical Ballads last time, so I have added The Annotated Hobbit by Tolkien, The Iliad by Homer. I finished both of those end of last year. And then the four that I've talked about already, uh, Conan, Catalyst, Ship of Destiny, and then Measure for Measure, putting me at 17. So I'm enjoying it, uh, being able to track it this way so far. I've, I've got 25 on each page, so I've got front and back that will get me through. And I'm tracking my Read Every Book by Ray Bradbury. I've got five of them done so far. At some point in time, I'll talk about how I'd rank them. I'm marking my Reading Through the Western Canon as put forth by Steve Donahue. So I've finished reading the Book of Isaiah from the Bible, along with the Iliad and Catalysts. Tracking my Read Through Michael at Fit to Be Reds. 150 sci-fi books, so I'm at 14 of them. When I get to 15, I'll, I'll do a video kind of ranking them. Then I'll do another one at probably 20. Maybe I'll get to 15, then I'll do that and Ray Bradbury together, and then do uh, just this one on 20. Probably not even a full ranking for the first one, just revealing like my top five. I'm tracking some buddy reads as they're coming through so that I don't forget about them. And in the last week, uh, I've had Beth Ann uh, agree to want to read uh, Tales of the Dienji with me. So that was one of my mammoths that I wanted to read this year. Uh, Beautiful Minutia wants to read a C.S. Lewis nonfiction. I told her, pick the one, whichever one you want. She's thinking March to, to read that, so I'll be excited to dive back into some Lewis. Uh, Gina Stanier uh, is going to read a Shakespeare play of her choosing with me in September. And then uh, Tori from Hufflepuff Discovery is going to read Julius Caesar with me in March. Uh, so I, I'm enjoying that. I'm tracking my progress with writing. So the, the top bar is for story. Bottom bar is for a poem. Because that's my goal is to write a story and a poem each month. Tracking my head-to-head -head gaming plays with my wife. So we've only played the one game.
I'm tracking board games I've played for the first time this year. So I can kind of rank those over the course of the year. I'm just writing some brief thoughts. Then I've got my January at the very back. And keeping tabs on my, my favorites, so the standouts, the ones that are contenders for best book, best poem, best play, best reread, best board game, um, best essay, best short story. I've got best comic in here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm tracking my contenders early on so that I remember. So as you can see, the, the one with the, the, the Conan the Barbarian number 10, Beware the Wrath of Anu. Uh, was the one that was a standout from the Epic Collection. Unfortunately, some of the really good ones were early in that collection that I read last year, so they aren't contenders this year, but I'll be able to keep tabs on all of that, and, and I'm excited to do that, to, to track things a little bit better, so that I, I'm not relying solely on memory. and I can look back at any point in time and see where I'm at and what I've done. So what I'm currently reading right now, I'm working my way through the Odyssey, I'm enjoying it a lot more than the Iliad. The Iliad was fine. It wasn't uh, unenjoyable, but it wasn't phenomenal for me. I'm reading uh, some poetry by John Keats. So we're reading uh, as part of the Poetry Book Club, Lamia Isabella, The Eve of St. Agnes and Other Poems, which was published in 1820. And it, it's a relatively short collection. A couple of the poems in there are really long. The, the ones that we just read, we have our first check-in today, uh, were Lamia and Isabella. Both of them really long poems. And then the next week we've got some of the odes and then uh, Eve of St. Agnes. St. Agnes is one of the long ones too. But if you're interested at all in joining in, you don't even have to go back and read Lamia or Isabella. You can jump in. we got a brand new week starting now. Uh, reach out to me on Voxer. I'd be happy to add you to our little poetry group. Uh, it's just three of us right now. Myself, Aaron, and then Alice from Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. And we're enjoying reading Keats. I hope I hope that they're enjoying it because I certainly am. Um, the Isabella is one of my is on my list of best poems of the year so far. Unfortunately, none of the rest of Catalyst made that cut. Um, and I'm en I'm enjoying that a lot. I'm reading uh, Worms of the Earth by Robert E. Howard because I needed to. Visit Something Other Than Conan by Robert E. Howard to determine something about Robert E. Howard and where he stands. That will be revealed in the next week or two when I get around to a tag um, that I have been tagged in by the creator. And so I wanted to make sure I gave Robert E. Howard a fair shake before uh, getting around to that. I, I've started my Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings read-along. Uh, I've read chapter one of the, the Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. I need to get back to that. And I'm really looking forward to that. It, it's at a nice slow pace. It, it's enjoyable. I've read the first couple chapters of Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas. Oh, man. Dumas is fantastic. He, it, it was good to revisit Dumas now ahead of uh, the, the same tag that I'm looking at Robert E. Howard for. Because he's just... Fantastic writer and quickly reminded me why I love Alexander Dumas, even though I've only read three things by him. Count of Monte Cristo, uh, Three Musketeers, and Man of the Iron Mask. That's enough. And revisiting this and then uh, hitting the rest of the D'Artagnan romances this year is going to be just fantastic. I'm going to absolutely enjoy it. I started reading a little bit of Edmund Spencer, uh, reading out of The Shepherd's Calendar, this month. I uh, hope to have that done before the end of this week so that then the following week I can hit uh, my reading from Chaucer. And then I'll have hit my, my three January on the my big plans for the whole year, uh, working my way through works of both Chaucer and Spencer. Now I've made some good progress on both of them uh, because the, the font is just so small in that book, and that's okay. Um, you know, each... The, the Shepherd's Calendar is nice because it's broken into the 12 months. And each of those months is only three or four pages long. So nice and bite-sized little chunks that I can read through. I'm working my way through East of Eden by John Steinbeck. And about two-thirds of the way through it, 
and listening to it on audiobook. And uh, my, my loan for that's almost up, so I'm not going to finish it before that's up. So I'm going to put in a, a request to renew it. And when that comes through, I'll, I'll finish listening to that. I'm not... I'm not overly wowed yet. I, I keep waiting for when it's going to grip me and wow me because it's on so many booktubers beloved lists and it's just been fine for me. I, I'm far more enjoying the, the opening chapters of the idiot by Dostoevsky. So I, I don't know. I'm waiting for it to wow me. So the, the last thing I want to talk about, because I don't want to be too long on this, is that if you missed it, I've made a, a video yesterday announcing a Q&A that I'll be doing next weekend. So go to that video. It's a minute long. You don't even need to listen to the video. You can just leave a comment with as many questions as you want uh, to ask me about anything you want. Uh, and the reason I'm doing the Q&A is celebrate the paperback releases which will be happening over the course of this week. I, last night, I actually sat down and got them both uh, updated and prepped and submitted, and it'll take up to 72 hours. So by Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, you should be able to order a paperback copy of Monster Huntress, as well as A Merchant in Oria and Other Tales, both through Amazon. So please, if you're wanting to to be notified once that goes live let me know otherwise by next weekend for sure they should be up and i'll be doing the q a uh, in celebration of the paperback release of both of those uh, because i'm excited to have those out to where people can get it can get a copy and to get a copy of both of them um well it may be not monster hunters because i've got my old copy of it and nothing's really changed in that but definitely a copy of uh, Merchant Nori and other tales for my own shelf. So thank you, BookTube. Hope you have a great day. And I look forward to uh, hearing from all of you and uh, hope you all had a great weekend.